Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. So we are continuing our anatomy classes. So today's topic is muscles of mastication. So muscles of mastication are the muscles which involve in the process of chewing or mastication. So they are a group of muscles that help in movement of the mandible during the chewing and speech. Okay. So we need to study these muscles because these muscles control the opening and closing the mouth and uh, the role in the equilibrium which uh, created within the mouth and they also play a role in configuration of face okay so we have four pairs of muscles in the mandible which make chewing movement possible so these muscles along with accessory muscles are together known as muscles of mastication so other important factors of muscles of mastication are these muscles have roles in prosthetic dentistry which defines the borders and peripheral extensions of the dentures so the primary muscles are temporalis masseter lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid the accessory muscles we can divide it into two groups that is the muscles which is above the hyoid bone are suprahyoid muscles and the muscles which is below the hyoid bone are infrahyoid muscles the suprahyoid muscles are digastric stylohyoid mylohyoid and geniohyoid infrahyoid are sternohyoid thyrohyoid and omohyoid so these accessory muscles it's very easy because it's origin and insertion is given in the name itself anyway we have another classification that is jaw dip elevators and jaw depressor jaw elevators are masseter temporalis and medial pterygoid the lateral pterygoid involves in jaw depression jaw depressors along with lateral pterygoid we have anterior digastric geniohyoid and mylohyoid so let's see one by one the primary muscles and accessory muscles of mastication so we'll start with primary muscles of mastication so we have masseter temporalis lateral and medial pterygoid so we are studying this under four headings that is its origin its insertion its nerve block and uh, blood supply and uh, the venous drainage and its basic actions in mastication so we'll start with the muscle masseter the word masseter in greek means a chewer so it is a basic or it is a powerful muscle which helps in mastication or chewing that is basically uh, it elevates mandible and it helps to occlude teeth in mastication that is its basic function so masseter is a muscle which has three layers that is superficial layer middle layer and deeper layer and it is a quadrilateral muscle so quadrilateral means quad means four so it has four sides exactly we can make out it as a four side uh, dimension so it is known as quadrilateral muscle and this three layers that is superficial middle and deep layers blend anteriorly so this is the anterior part this is the posterior part superior part inferior part so this has superficial middle and deeper layers so these three layers are blending at the anterior portion so you need to visualize it in a three dimensional format this is a two dimensional picture it is not easy to depict a three layers so that is why i just uh, drawn a quadrilateral fibers representing the masseter muscle okay so let's see the origin of these three layers so origin means where this muscle fibers are starting from and insertion means where this muscle fibers are ending up okay so the superficial layer which starts from maxillary process of zygomatic bone so this is a zygomatic bone and this is a zygomatic arch so it starts from maxillary process of zygomatic bone 
and the anterior two third of inferior border of zygomatic arch so let it this be the inferior arch so it is from the anterior two third so anterior two third and posterior one third so it is from the anterior two third of inferior border of zygomatic arch and the zygomatic bone in specific maxillary process of zygomatic bone whereas the middle layer middle layer is formed from medial aspect of anterior third of zygomatic arch so this is a and uh, zygomatic arch this will be the lateral side because we are seeing from outside right so that will be the lateral side so there will be a medial side inside so the middle layer is originating from medial aspect of anterior to third of zygomatic arch okay so that is middle layer and lower border of posterior third of zygomatic arch and posterior third we have it is originating from the lower border and also from the medial aspect of zygomatic arch whereas a deeper layer originating from deep surface of zygomatic arch okay so we have three layers superficial middle and deep layers so superficial from maxillary process of zygomatic bone and anterior to third of inferior border of zygomatic arch middle portion is from the medial aspect of anterior to third of zygomatic arch and the lower border of posterior third of zygomatic arch and the deep surface of zygomatic arch giving rise to the deeper layer of masseter muscle okay and now it is where it is ending up or it is getting inserted so layer by layer superficial layer is inserted in angle of mandible so this portion is angle of mandible and the posterior half okay lower posterior half of lateral surface of mandibular ramus so this is the lateral surface of mandibular ramus and the inside will be the mesial uh, i mean the medial surface and it is getting inserted into the lower posterior half lower posterior half this is upper half this is lower half and posterior so this area okay so it is inserted into the angle of mandible and lower posterior this is a, a anterior portion posterior portion upper portion lower portion so the lower posterior will be here right so lower posterior border and angle of mandible whereas the middle layer which is the middle part of ramus of mandible okay so this is the middle part of ramus of mandible and the deeper layer will be on the coronoid process and upper part of mandibular ramus this is a coronoid process so we can see this one this is a condylar process coronoid process so it is formed in coronoid process and upper part of mandibular ramus okay that is the insertion now we uh, let's see the nerve supply and blood supply nerve supply is by the masseteric nerve which is an an in turn anterior division of mandibular nerve and blood supply by masseteric artery which is a branch of maxillary artery and the venous drainage by masseteric vein and as i mentioned the action is to elevate mandible it is to elevate mandible and occlude the teeth and mastication okay that is why it is very important muscle masseter it is to elevate ma mandible so the masseter is over now we are into temporal muscle or temporalis muscle the name itself gives temporalis muscle it is mainly on the temporal bone so we know frontal bone which is the front bone parietal bone it is a topper bone and the temporal bone on the lateral side and occipital bone on the back side okay so this is a temporal bone and uh, it is a particularly a fan shaped muscle that covers the temporal region okay you can see it is a fan shaped muscle which is on the temporal side of our skull and it is the largest masticatory muscle but not considered to be the most powerful one okay so it has originated from the inferior temporal line or the floor of the temporal fossa and from the overlying temporal fascia okay so we have temporal line temporal fossa and temporal fascia so inferior temporal line floor of temporal fossa and overlying temporal fascia so as i mentioned since it is a two dimensional picture it is not easy to explain it but you understand the temporal line temporal fossa and temporal fascia all are structures which is present in the temporal bone 
which is giving its origin okay so it has basically uh, three areas anterior temporal and the middle temporal and the posterior temporal this is the posterior part anterior part and middle part so the origin is having temporal line temporal fossa and temporal fascia okay so these three giving rise to temporalis muscle which is a fan shaped muscle now let's see the insertion so you can see it is inserted in the coronoid process and anterior part of ramus okay so margins and deep surfaces of coronoid process and anterior border of ramus of mandible the nerve supply of temporalis is the deep temporal branches which is a um, branch of mandibular nerve from the anterior division and the blood supply is from superficial temporal artery which is a branch of maxillary artery and the venous drainage is from superficial and medial temporal vein now let's see the functions of temporalis the anterior fibers so the anterior fibers they elevate the mandible and posterior fibers they retract the mandible okay once it is protruded the retraction bringing back the mandible towards the normal position by the posterior fibers and also crushing the foot between uh, molars and there will be side to side movements it also helps in grinding movements now we have lateral pterygoid muscle which is uh, also known as external pterygoid muscle and it is a muscle of mastication that occupy a horizontal position okay rest all are in a vertical direction this is in a horizontal direction and it is a thick short conical and triangular muscle with two heads it has superior head and inferior head so its origin the superior head originates from the infratemporal surface and infratemporal crest of greater wing of sphenoid bone okay so it is originating from greater wing of sphenoid bone and infratemporal surface whereas the inferior head originating from lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate that is why this name it is originating from lateral surface of lateral pterygoid plate and it is getting inserted into these fibers run backwards and laterally and converge into pterygoid fovea on anterior surface of neck of mandible so you can see here it is of pterygoid fovea to the neck of mandible and also to the anterior margin of articular disc and capsule of tmj okay so tmj is here so it is also getting inserted into the articular disc and capsule of tmj so that is lateral pterygoid which is getting inserted into the disc articular disc and capsule of tmj and also to the pterygoid fovea on anterior surface of neck of mandible okay the nerve supply is lateral pterygoid now which is uh, a branch of anterior trunk of uh, mandibular nerve blood supply is uh, via maxillary artery and ascending palatine artery and basic functions are it is when it is acting together these muscles protrude the mandible and depress the chin okay so it is protrude the mandible and depress the chin and when it is acting alone and alternatively they produce side to side movements of mandible okay side to side movements of mandible is when they acting alone and alternatively okay one me medial pterygoid then the lateral pterygoid so alternatively it helps to uh, move the mandible side to side so that is a function of lateral pterygoid mainly to protrude the mandible and depress the chin when acting together and the next and the last and primary muscles of mastication is medial pterygoid muscle uh, which is also known as internal pterygoid lateral pterygoid is known as external pterygoid medial pterygoid is known as internal pterygoid muscle it is almost a mirror like image of masseter muscle okay so the masseter muscle is on the lateral side this is on the medial side okay it is a mirror like image of masseter muscle 
and it is a rhomboid shape and practically in same direction of the inner surface of mandible so this is actually inner surface of mandible that is why i'm putting dots here so it is rhomboidal in shape and runs through the same direction of the inner surface of mandible it has two heads that is superficial and deeper head so superficial head originating from maxillary tuberosity and uh, deep head which is uh, from the medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate and part of palatine bone so that is why uh, it is based on the lateral pterygoid plate whether it is originating from medial side whether it is originating from the lateral side the name is given okay so it is from the medial surface of lateral pterygoid and also a part of palatine bone and it is inserted into the uh, that is these fibers run backwards downwards and laterally to the roughen area of medial surface of the ankle of mandible so it's so this area okay so that's why putting dot here it is on the medial side okay so it is originating from medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate this is from the lateral side of lateral pterygoid plate that is why lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid name and its nerve supply is the main uh, trunk of mandibular nerve blood supply is pterygoid branch of the maxillary artery and the functions are it is helps to elevate the mandible and closes the jaw and also acting to the they help to protrude the mandible when acting alone it helps to grinding motion on alternative side similar actions such as uh, lateral pterygoid but when they alternatively helps in movement from side to side so these are the primary muscles of mastication masseter temporalis lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid this is a quadrilateral shape this is a fan shaped and this is a rhomboid shape this is running in horizontal direction and its origin insertion nerve and blood supply venous drainage and its action now we have accessory muscles of mastication and now we have accessory muscles of mastication so principal muscles of mastication uh, we are covered masseter temporalis medial and lateral pterygoid this is accessory muscles which uh, helps the mastication process along with the principal muscles okay the first one is digastric muscle so this is a mandible i drawn and this is a upward tilted mandible and this is a hyoid bone okay so hyoid bone and mandible so it is connecting two bellies these are known as anterior bellies and these are the posterior bellies so these are two bellies uh, masses of muscle tissues joined by an intermediate tendon which originate like anterior belly which originate from the digastric fossa of mandible so this is supposed to be the digastric fossa it originate from digastric fossa and lateral to the symphysis uh, menti so symphysis menti will be exactly at this position so lateral to the mental symphysis it originates and posterior belly originates from mastoid notch of temporal bone okay so the mastoid notch will be inside anyway it is originating from mastoid uh, notch of temporal bone and it insert both into a intermediate tendon and held by the fibrous pulley to the hyoid bone so this is anyway hyoid bone so both are attached to the hyoid bone by help of a tendon so the digastric muscle origin and insertion and the nerve supply is anterior belly by nerve to mylohyoid and the posterior belly is by facial nerve and the functions are depression of jaw and it is uh, helping for elevation of hyoid during uh, the swallowing this will pull up the hyoid while swallowing that is about uh, digastric muscle it has anterior belly and posterior belly which originating from the symphysis menti and the mastoid notch of temporal bone both are inserted into hyoid bone nerve to mylohyoid and facial nerve and depression of jaw and elevation of hyoid bone are the action the next muscle is mylohyoid muscle 
so myeloid muscle is a flat rectangular muscle lying deep to the anterior belly of digastric okay so again this is a a poor tilted mandible hyoid bone so it is a flat triangular muscle lying deep to the anterior belly of digastric so this is anterior belly of digastric so it lies deep to these two bellies and it forms the floor of the mouth okay so this is the floor of the mouth this is the upward tilted upward tilted and this forms the floor of the mouth it origin from mylohyoid line of mandible mylohyoid line from mandible and inserted into like uh, the medial and anterior fibers into median raphe and posterior fibers into the body of hyoid bone okay and uh, the nerve supply is nerve to myeloid and function is to helps in depression of mandible and elevation of hyoid bone so also it helps to elevate the floor of the mouth to help in deglutination okay and the third muscle we have is geniohyoid Geniohyoid is very short and narrow muscle which lies above mylohyoid and it origin from inferior mental spine that is genial tubercle and inserted into hyoid bone the body of anterior surface of hyoid bone and the nerve supply is hypoglossal nerve and the artery is facial artery elevation of hyoid bone and also we have stylohyoid uh, muscle which is a small muscle that lies along the upper border of posterior belly of digastric muscle so this is a posterior belly and the upper border of posterior belly of digastric muscle origin from the lateral and inferior surface of styloid process because it's origin from styloid process ending in hyoid bone it origin from uh, tubercle ending in hyoid bone origin from the mylohyoid line ending in hyoid bone okay so all these four muscles are above the hyoid bone so it is known as suprahyoid muscles and these two are infrahyoid muscles because it is connecting to sternum to hyoid thyroid to hyoid these are the structures which lies below the hyoid bone which is known as infrahyoid muscles so stylohyoid muscle inserted into the body of hyoid bone nerve supply is branch from facial nerve and function it pulls the hyoid bone upward and backward so we have two infrahyoid muscles they are sternohyoid and thyrohyoid sternohyoid muscle which origin from posterior surface of manubrium deep to sternohyoid and it inserted into oblique line of thyroid cartilage arterial supply is superior thyroid artery nerve supply is ansa cervicalis c2 and c3 branches and its action is depression of larynx that is sternohyoid now we have thyrohyoid it origin from upper part of oblique line on thyroid cartilage inserted into lower border of greater corner of hyoid bone arterial supply is superior thyroid artery nerve supply is hypoglossal nerve c1 and also it helps to depress the hyoid bone okay so that's all about muscles of mastication we had seen principal muscles Diga uh, principal muscles are temporalis, masseter, medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, and accessory muscles. They are digastric, mylohyoid, geniohyoid, stylohyoid, so known as suprahyoid muscles, sternohyoid, thyroid, and also omohyoid is there. So all these are the accessory muscles. It's an important question commonly asked in university: the muscles of mastication. So you need to draw a picture. It's not very easy to draw a picture. At least, if you can draw, you need to draw. You can write the principal uh, muscles. You can draw, at least uh, showing the boundaries and its origin and insertion. And you need to uh, write in this format. It will fetch you more marks because it is easy to understand for the evaluator. Under these subheadings, origin, insertion. nerve supply or blood supply and action okay rather than writing up uh, like paragraphs so this format you need to write so i'll come up with a new topic in human anatomy thank you